welcome to session number 11 of grade 9 biology. This series has this as the 11th uh, end or episode. Okay, so I hope that you are keeping up. Um, we are still going to uh, discuss uh, things regarding the following learning competency, which is explaining the different patterns of non-Mendelian inheritance. Um, it's going to be, uh, to be found in the learner's module, unit 1, module 2, pages 15 to 18. So let's start. If you want to have a copy of this presentation, I am just urging you to message me through my Facebook page. It's in facebook.com forward slash knowledge catalog forward slash. Let's begin. As usual, our uh, sessions or our uh, episodes are divided into three parts. So the first part for this uh, video is a discussion regarding limited traits. And then it's going to be followed by a discussion about uh, sex-influenced Traits. Okay, so first is sex limited, tapos pangalawa is sex influenced traits. Uh, remember, yung last time natin yata is, um, ano kasi yun? Uh, we talked about sex determination in the previous uh, video, if I'm not mistaken. But if you want to have a look at that video, I will be sending you a link in this uh, with this one. And then uh, the last part of this um, session is going to be solving word problems. So merong mga word problems na related to sex uh uh, related inheritance, and we will be trying to solve, or actually we're going to solve some of them okay, by the end of this video. Let's start. Um, this is how uh, it, things were done okay, in genetics, how um, explaining, how ex the explanations about uh, the transfer of traits from the parent to the offspring are done in genetics. And uh, okay, among them are the traits that are uh, passed from the parents to the offspring, pero they're only going to be expressed in one gender, and in this case, pwedeng sa male, pwedeng sa female lang, such as lactation. So sex lim those are sex-limited traits. Sex-limited traits are only expressed by one gender, but they can be trans transferred by both of the parents so the, to their offsprings. And both of the offsprings uh, types, uh, genders, male and female, they do have these traits. So let us be clear with that. Kumbaga, these traits are found in the genotypes of the uh, parents. They're also found in the genotypes of the uh, offspring. It's just that in both the parents and the offspring, uh, may express lang ang mga traits na to in one of the uh, two biological genders, two usual biological genders. So the female genotypes, say for instance in this example, are uh, right here and the male genotypes are also right here. So, ito yung mga genes na mayroon sila and their phenotypes, the physical manifestation of these traits are right here. So, observe that for the XX uh, sex chromosomes that are uh, paired with LL, which is for lactation, uh, they're both uh, dominant, right? Okay, so LL, written in capital letters or in uppercase letters, are both dominant, makes the female lactate. And then, uh, kung heterozygous naman siya, such as in this case, since the uh, dominant L is right here, upper, uppercase L is right here, it will also make the female lactate. But the absence of that dominant trait, such as in this case, will make the female non-lactate, non-lactating. Okay, so, uh, kapag homozygous dominant, the female will lactate. Kapag heterozygous, the female will still lactate. And when it is the pairing of the uh, recessive traits, such as non-lactating in this case, the female will not lactate. Ayan. So I hope that is clarified. Kasi sa male genotypes, ganito siya. Even though yung male, XY, meron siyang uh, homozygous dominant and uh, heterozygous, since lalaki siya, hindi niya pa rin i-express yung lactation. Okay, so... Um, yeah, hindi, I, I think, I don't think I can still uh, emphasize that much because again, this uh, trait is only limited to a particular sex. In this case, lactation is limited to females, at least in the case of cattle. Okay, so in cattle, both genders are carriers for lactation, but only one of them can express it. The allele for lactation, uh, L, is dominant over non-lactation. Small letter L. Ayan. So that ends the first part of the discussion. I, the first part of this session, which is a discussion about sex-limited traits. Remember, 
Sex-limited traits are uh, found in the genotypes of both genders, but they can only be expressed in one of those two usual biological genders. Okay, the next part is also a discussion about sex-influenced traits naman. So if sex-limited traits are only expressed in one gender, how about sex-influenced traits? Uh, let us first observe this, um, call it? Okay, this uh, table. So female genotypes and male genotypes. So this is obviously baldness. So being bald is uh, said to be, in this example, a dominant trait. Because as you can see, homozygous uh, B, that is uppercase, will make a female bald. Whereas heterozygous uh, bald the man, like meron siyang isang recessive trait, will make the female non-bald. And then uh, the presence of the recessive traits, which is non-bald, will make the female non-bald. Okay, so the female, there's a, still a tendency for females to be uh, bald in this case. Now, let's move to the males. Um, the presence of a homozygous uh, dominant trait will make the male bald, obviously. And then the presence of a heterozygous uh, trait, a heterozygous trait for baldness, will make the male still, you know, bald. Kasi na, may express niya yung dominant trait. And then, uh, the presence of recessive traits for a male, which is non-baldness, will make the male non-bald. Now, what did you observe? The difference between um, male and fe males and females in this case for sex-influenced traits is uh, it lies in the heterozygous uh, allele pairing. Okay? So in here, heterozygous will make the female ex uh, not express the uh, dominant trait. And that is influenced by her sex since she is a female. Whereas a male who will be getting that kind of trait, even though it's heterozygous, will still be expressing baldness. To baga, uh, the usual, since it, the dominant trait is present, uh, the male, the sex of the male, influences the expression of that. Whereas uh, the sex of females will influence the non-expression of that particular trait despite, despite the fact that the uh, dominant trait is present. Pattern baldness has a gene that acts like it is dominant among males and recessive among females because again, it is influenced by the sex. That ends the second part of this uh, PowerPoint. Let us now deal with some uh, word problems. I say in number one. So you may grab a clean sheet of paper or uh, get your notebook in science and then answer the following question. Label it solving word problems, sex-related inheritance. Number one, hemophilia is a disease caused by a gene found on the X chromosome. Therefore, it is referred to as sex-linked disease. The recessive allele causes the disease. A, a man with hemophilia marries a woman that is homozygous dominant for the trait. Now, I would like you to put uh, the missing factors in this Punnett square. And then look for the uh, characteristics, the genotypes of the four offspring. Now, answer the following question. Will any of the children be hemophiliac? If so, how many of them? If you need some more time to figure out an answer to this question, you may, of course, um, just uh, pause this video. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready for the next one. Number two, blood type is determined by the presence or absence of antigens. If the father of four children has a blood type A and their mother has a blood type O, show the Punnett square if half of the children must have blood type A while the other half blood type O. So what you need to do is just uh, put your answers in this uh, Punnett square. You may pause this video to have more time in answering it. But if you have decided to continue, let us now deal with the answers. Right, so presented right here is the are the correct um, alleles, okay, allele pairings too, for the male and the female parent and the alleles for all of the four offspring. So obviously, all of the four are going to be hemophilia since you are pairing here an X 
uh, that is that has the property uh, I mean that has the hemophiliac trait or hemophiliac gene okay uh, and then X with the hemophilia another X with hemophiliac gene so these two females are going to be hemophiliac and then this one the man uh, the, these two hemophiliac uh, female genes or X genes X I mean X sex chromosomes are going to be paired up with the Y and remember Y is not going to have that hemophiliac trait in it because uh, hemophilia is uh, an X-linked, uh, you know, it's an X-linked disease. All right. So, ayan, um, but only one of these is needed to make a person, a, a male offspring, hemophiliac. So, yeah. So, all of them, all of the offspring are going to be hemophiliac. Now, the following man is the is supposed to be the Punnett square that must uh, be used or that must be shown so that half of the uh, children are going to have blood type A while the other half blood type O. So yeah, uh, if you pair a female that has blood type O with a male that has blood type A, okay, kailangan yung female dapat talaga ganyan kasi this is the only uh, allele pairing for blood type O. Kailangan ganyan siya and kailangan for the male. In the case of the male, gagamitin yung heterozygous pairing. Kasi if you use the homozygous pairing, all of these offspring are going to be, you guessed it, okay, blood type A. Pero since we used uh, heterozygous pairing, uh, half of them, half of the offspring are going to be heterozygous and thus express in their phenotypes in blood type A. Okay, and then half of them will be homozygous for the recessive and thus they will be expressing blood type O. That ends this uh, video. Uh, it, it, it has that, that last part as solving uh, problems, word problems related to uh, sex-linked uh, diseases or sex-linked uh, traits. Ayan. So I hope that you have had a nice time studying genetics uh, using this uh, series. The Knowledge Catalog is a brand being developed by a teacher creator. I am that teacher creator. I am a high school teacher in the Philippines and I love developing content that I find useful and needed to better my instruction. Your support may lead to, ano, may lead to uh, me creating more videos like this and it may also uh, provide me with some tools that I can use for effective instruction such as uh, you know, uh, procuring some tablets or a de decent studio because I don't have a studio yet at home. So I am just doing my best to provide you with the best quality that I can uh, create out of what I have right now. Okay, so if there are sent, if there if there are any comments regarding my videos about the quality, uh, you may point them out. But I hope that you will be doing so constructively. If you want to have a copy of this presentation, I can share it with you. Just message me uh, in my Facebook page through my Facebook page, facebook.com/knowledgecatalog/see you in the next video.